Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice. DJ Event Planner. ADJ. NLFX Professional. Promo Only. Newmark. And DJ and TV Insiders. Hi, this is John Young with the Disc Jockey News and Disc Jockey News TV. Thank you for joining us tonight out on Facebook and out there on YouTube. For tonight's show, we've got a special guest. And now it's DJ John Young. Hey, this is John Young with the Disc Jockey News. Today we're going to be talking about using vocal drops for branding. Well, I was trying to do a vocal drop there. It wasn't pretty good and it wasn't good. But a lot of you have been asking, it's like, hey, should I go and invest in getting vocal drops uh, to brand my DJ name for my events? And I think there, this is a yes and a no. And then we'll go through that quickly. Uh, the, the reason for yes is that there are some events that you will do that dropping your name into it isn't going to be a... a a noticeable thing that's going to cause issues and, and make people kind of scratch their head into what's going on here. Such as if I'm doing a club. In a club I would probably use a vocal drop and some of you are going to have different opinions on how often you would use the vocal the drop saying you know you're in the mix with you know DJ John Young that kind of a thing. And it might be one of those things that you drop maybe once or twice a night. It's going to depend on how fast your crowd turns over and how much that and da 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 da. You know, I've been to some clubs where DJs have dropped it in like every about 40 minutes, you know, 30 to 40 minutes. And you know what? It was like, uh, you know, the, you're in the mix with DJ John Young, you know, spinning the tunes tonight. DJ, that could, and they were really just these little subtle subliminal things in the background. And you didn't, it didn't seem bothersome or irksome. It just was there. And it was, you know, kind of maybe used over the transition of two songs. And it was cool with that. No one was really uh, bothered with that. Now, take that concept and let's go to a teen dance, a school dance. Would I do something like that there? And I'm, again, there are going to be different opinions. This is my opinion in this and you're going to talk to any number of people and they're going to have a different opinion. I think a drop at times could be very, very cool in a teen dance. Maybe early in the night to kind of introduce that, hey, here we are. Then if you've got a set that's just absolutely killer and the crowd's going, going wild and doing that, that might be a good time to make that drop that drop in there so that you know kids are like, hey, this is an incredible set and uh, you're the mix with it. You know, that's some kind of a drop that fits. I think I could see that at a teen dance a couple of times a night. Now, the final one is weddings. At a wedding, this is a, a vocal drop, and this is, I, this is wedding DJs who have asked this question the most. Club DJs understand what they're doing, and they do their thing, and they're much better at it than I. Wedding DJs, this is such a faux pas, I would say so far away from it. Because at a wedding, yes, there might be that opportunity to drop something in that last half hour to an hour. You know, you've got the mix going, and, you know, and then all of a sudden, yeah, you're in the mix with the... But most of the time at a wedding, you're not the star. You are there to facilitate and help them have a great day. You are just basically there as someone who is in enhancing the day for the bride and groom. They're the stars. There's the one. Now, a vocal drop that says, and you're at you know, Tony and Tina's wedding. Sounds kind of hokey, but I could see if you wanted to do something like that and use it obviously in an appropriate place, the appropriate thing set. Yeah, but a vocal drop that's promoting me as a DJ at a wedding, I think is such a bad idea. I would highly, highly, highly recommend not doing it. But again, everyone gets to do their own thing. I want to hear from you. If you have used vocal drops, I want to hear where you're using them. You know, there's, I, there's numerous types of events, and I didn't, you know, parades. I would have a vocal drop going every, you know, every 200 feet on a parade route, that type of thing. There's so many different places, but I want to hear where you use vocal drops. Put that down in the comment section if you've used them and where you've used them successfully. And the biggest one I want to hear is where you played it and you've had people like kind of cringing and it's like, oh, wait, that was a really dumb idea. I was that guy. I had some vocal drops made in early in my career and I dropped them at, you know, early in the night we, after the first dances and we had that first party set and you're in the mix with, uh, uh, at the time, we were Sound Force Disc Jockey. And I, and people would kind of look and they're like, what? what was it? it wasn't a, whoa, this is cool. It was like they were feeling like kind of violated to a point. Tell me if you've had some situations where it's been a cringe moment for you using a vocal drop. Or again, events, did you use them? Just share that down in the information in the comment section down below. We'd really appreciate it. 
Once again, this is the Tuesday Tips. We're going to be doing these throughout the summer of 2018. Be sure to check those out on the, our, our, on the Facebook page and the website. We're going to have all the links and such out there so you can go and check out all of our videos. And then our Monday night convention series, you need to check those out too, out on djntv.com. Click on convention series and you'll see them there. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.